Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Well, good morning and welcome to Downpatrick for our service today. And we'll begin by listening to John on the organ, who's going to play for us the hymn, Praise the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. Philippians chapter 4 verses 1 to 9. Therefore my brethren whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord my beloved. I entreat you Odia and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. And I ask you also true yoke fellow help these women for they have laboured side by side with me in the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, again I will say, rejoice. Let all men know your forbearance, the Lord is at hand. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, 
If there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Well, I've only ever once taken a long haul flight and that was a few years ago and I flew to Taiwan to attend uh, a meeting of the International Association for Religious Freedom in a monastery, a Buddhist monastery uh, outside the, the big, big city of Kaohsiung. It was a very interesting experience indeed. But one evening when there was no uh, meeting going on, a friend and myself uh, decided to take a bus into the town of Kaohsiung. And that was very interesting as well. Uh, but coming back out of the city, back to the monastery, uh, we made our way to a very uh, grimy bus depot to catch the bus. And in the waiting room there, there was a big screen on the wall which was showing an endless loop of advertisements. And most of these, of course, I couldn't understand because they were all in Chinese. You could tell what they were for, but I, I couldn't understand uh, what they were saying. But one of, them, one of them particularly stood out to me. And it was an advertisement for an expensive new Japanese car. And it was lovingly filmed while a backing track played over the advert, which was actually a hymn sung in English. It's the same hymn which John just played for us. Uh, praise the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O my soul, praise him, for he is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear now to his temple draw near, praise him in glad adoration. And the backing track was a woman singing this hymn in English very beautifully while the, the film showed uh, all the shots of this expensive car. Now the hymn is based on Psalm 150, uh, some verses of which I, I read at the start of our service. And the hymn and the psalm are both great expressions of praise and of the value and importance of giving praise to God in all situations. Uh, the praise is being offered to that which is truly good, to that which is holy. And so when I saw this advert, there was something really unsettling about the counterpoint between this hymn and this uh, high-end uh, vehicle that was being so it seemed almost blasphemous really to mix the two things together. And I suppose that connection would have been lost on most of the people there who couldn't speak English and perhaps wouldn't even have known it was a hymn. But it was a very, very beautiful melodic backing track. And uh, to me, it was quite shocking. Uh, it seemed to be deliberately transferring the object of our worship from what was truly holy to something that clearly was not. It was extolling the virtues, if you like, of a patently false god. And as the camera swooped and spun around the car, so the voice sang on with the hymn in the background. But this stark contrast illustrated to me, perhaps I'm sure unintentionally, uh, in terms of the people who made the film, but it illustrated to me that we can make a choice. We can choose what we worship. We can choose where we place our trust. And I suppose a sudden crisis like this one, which we've all been plunged into, uh, is a reminder that we can easily place our trust in some very false gods at times. And these kinds of situations like this pandemic Remind us of what really matters, of what is important in life. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he gives the people there some advice to settle their differences and work together. And then he says, Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
And this is an encouragement to us all now to keep our focus on what is important in spiritual terms, to remember what is important in life. A friend of mine worked in the Middle East for a number of years. Uh, he's not a Muslim and he's not a particularly uh, religious person and he found the restrictions of Ramadan quite irksome. But he said to me he could see the point in that it made you question what the purpose and direction of life was. And that's the same kind of thing that this season of Lent is meant to point us towards. What are the real meanings of life and the world? Because we can all become obsessed with wealth or status or what the world deems success, when really we should be looking beyond that. And St. Paul goes on to remind his readers that the real meaning of our existence is not grounded in money or riches or anything like that. On the contrary, he says, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So at this time when we all need to pull together, let's think about what is really important, about what really matters in our lives. And let's support one another and keep our eyes fixed on the upward call of God. Amen. Let's join together now in the fellowship of prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, we turn our prayers to you, seeking your blessing and guidance. We bring you our prayers and supplications as we offer up our concerns for the world and all humankind. We give our thanks for all that is good in our lives, especially for our families and friends and all the people who support us on whom we depend in all that we do. Especially at this time, we pray for the health service. We pray for all those who work in it and ask that they be given strength and endurance for the days ahead. Be with all those in need and all those who are unwell. Grant to us all peace of mind that we may stand together in service and commitment to bring a better world into being as we advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen.
thank you, John. And of course, John is playing the organ in our church in Berlin. Well, now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, which the world can neither give nor take away, be with us all and abide in our hearts, this day and evermore. Amen.